Shalom, everybody. All um, praises to the Most High in the name of Yahweh Shah, the Black Messiah. Okay, this brother Adriel, and today's lesson is going to be on resurrection, regeneration, and reincarnation. Okay, and this lesson are for those that's new in this truth. Because as y'all begin to, to grow in y'all walk, as you begin to increase in learning, you'll see that there's a lot of strange teachings and, and off doctrines that's floating around in the, the Israelite community, if you will. And um, one of that doctrine is reincarnation, okay? It's being taught that once you die, you'll be reborn every three and four generations and you will live that same path or you will do the same thing as you did in the previous life in the next life, okay? That's, that's what's being taught right now uh, for a while uh, within the Israelite community. So what we're going to do is give the true understanding of what the Bible is saying and we're going to dissect this doctrine and we're going to pull out every verse they use to support reincarnation and put them back in their proper context to give y'all what the, the um the true understanding of what the scripture saying. Okay, so in order to do that, we gotta start off by defining the word um regeneration. Cause they'll take this word and, and make it mean that you'll die and come back in a different body, but you you still the same soul and you'll do that every three or four generations. That's what they give that's what they give the definition of regeneration. Okay, so what we're going to do is actually define the word regeneration in this compact Bible dictionary. Okay, if you have a compact Bible dictionary, we're going to turn to the definition of regeneration and we're going to see what the meaning of regeneration is. Okay, this is the compact Bible dictionary, page 493, the definition of regeneration. To be born again or to be restored, though the word is actually used only twice in the New Testament, Matthew 19, 28, and Titus 3 and 5, many synonymous passages suggest its basic meaning. Related terms are born again, born of God, quickened, and renewed. Regeneration is therefore the spiritual change wrought in the heart of man by an act of God in which his inherently sinful nature is changed and by which he is enabled to respond to God in faith. Regeneration involves an illumination of the mind, a change in the will, and a renewed nature. It extends to the total nature of man irrevocably altering his governing disposition and restoring him to a true experiential knowledge in Christ. That's basically what regeneration is. To be restored, to be renewed, to be uh, uh, renovated, or as Yahweh Shah says, to be born again. That's all it means. It means to be renewed in your mind, to be uh, changed in your spirit. That's all it means. So now let's get the scripture that further backs this up and further support the meaning, the true meaning of regeneration. John chapter three, verse three. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Verse 5. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, Except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Check that out. So Christ is saying that unless you be born by water or by the Spirit, he says unless you are born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Now, it's being taught that our forefathers or the apostles and all the prophets understood reincarnation during that time. But if that's the case, then why is this man Nicodemus asking, can a man enter his mother's womb again if they already understood reincarnation? If that was the case, then he would have said, okay, I understand what you're saying. He's going to come back in his, three, his third and fourth generation. Okay? But as we read verse 5, Christ said that, you got to be born of water and of the spirit. He didn't say you got to die and, and go, up, go up to the heavens and come back down in the full generation 
and uh, uh, enter the kingdom that way. No, it means to what? To be changed in your mind. Okay, so we're going to get some more scriptures on that. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 26, that he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of water by the word. This is what Christ meant when he says you got to be born of the water. Okay, in Ephesians it says that, um, that he might sanctify and cleanse it by the washing of water by the word. So you have to be born again by the word, meaning changed in your mind according to the scriptures. That's all Christ was saying, okay? Ephesians chapter 4 verse 22, that ye put off concerning the former conversation the old man, which is corrupt according to the deceitful lust. And be renewed in the spirit of your mind, and that ye put on the new man, which after God is created in righteousness and true holiness. That's literally what regeneration is, meaning to be changed in your mind, to be renewed or to be converted, okay, to be quickened. It has nothing to do with you dying and growing up to be judged. Okay, and coming back every third or fourth or fifth or sixth or seventh generation, okay, doing the same thing you was doing in that past life and, and, and living out that judgment that you was judged in your past life before. That's not in the Bible. That's damnable heresy. Okay, Christ and the prophets and, and the apostles never taught reincarnation. Okay, but this word reincarnation is being replaced with the word regeneration. So they'll tell you, well, it's not really reincarnation, it's regeneration because you're going to come back in the same, you're going to come back in a different body, but still the same soul. Regardless, that's not biblical, okay? We're going to pull out some more scriptures on what regeneration is and what it really means and how it coincides, um, um, lines up with the scriptures. Colossians chapter 3 verse 10, and have put on the new man, which is renewed in knowledge after the image of him that created him. 1 Peter chapter 1 verse 22, seeing ye have purified your souls in obeying the truth through the spirit unto unfeigned love of the brethren, see that ye love one another with a pure heart fervently, being born again, not of corruptible seed, but of incorruptible by the word of God, which liveth and abideth forever. Didn't we just read that in John the third chapter when Christ said you got to be born again by the word? That's all it's saying, to change your mind, to be converted. Nothing about dying and coming back on earth and, and doing the same thing uh, over and over and over and over again. Okay, that's that's not regeneration. That regeneration and reincarnation has two different meanings. Two totally different meanings, okay? But let's get one more on that. John chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickeneth. The flesh profiteth nothing. The words that I speak unto you, they are spirit and they are life. Those that don't know what the word quicken means, it means to be revived or to be restored. So when Christ said it is the spirit that quickeneth, it meaning what? The spirit is revived. It is refreshed. So when Christ said that, he was saying the words I speak is life, okay? Because the words he's speaking to our souls or to our spirits is going to revive us. It's going to regenerate us, okay? That's all it's saying. That's all it means to be revived. That's it. It's, it's that simple, okay? So we're going to, as we read earlier in the definition of regeneration, it referenced Matthew um, 19, 28. And Titus 3 and 5, because that's the only two times you will see that word. Okay, but they'll use this scripture in Matthew to, to make it seem like it's talking about reincarnation. Okay, let's let's get this scripture real quick. Matthew chapter 19, verse 28. And Jesus said unto them, Verily I say unto you, that ye which have followed me in the regeneration, when the Son of Man shall sit in the throne of his glory. Ye also shall sit upon twelve thrones, judging the twelve tribes of Israel. So because this uh, scripture has the word regeneration, 
they will take that verse and be like, see, okay, the apostles are back on the earth now because Christ said in the regeneration, you're gonna follow me. So how's that gonna happen if there's no reincarnation? Well, if we truly understand the scriptures and thoroughly read it for understanding, when is Christ going to sit in his throne and when are the apostles going to judge the 12, um, the 12 tribes of Israel in the kingdom of heaven, okay? In the kingdom of God, when everything are made new again, when the Most High is going to make that new heaven and that new earth, when the earth is completely refreshed. That's what Christ is saying, okay? Isaiah chapter 65 verse 17, for behold, I create new heavens and a new earth and the former shall not be remembered nor come into mind but be ye glad and rejoice forever in that which i create for behold i create jerusalem of rejoicing and her people a joy and i will rejoice in jerusalem and joy in my people and the voice of weeping shall be no more heard in her nor the voice of crying so that's the regeneration right there. When the Most High is going to make a new heaven and a new earth. And when Yahweh or Christ is going to come and sit on this throne. And the 12 apostles are going to sit in their throne judging the 12 tribes of Israel. That's all they're saying. It's nothing about uh, coming back on earth and, and, and doing the same thing over and over again. So they would take that word regeneration and make some crazy doctrine and some uh, uh, a crazy understanding around that one word okay and they'll and they'll make it they'll present it as it's some type of as a terror doctrine okay where it's only for wise people to understand and 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 if if you don't have this understanding then you're not on that deeper level of of understanding okay so that way you know it'll play on your mind and it'll, it'll make you want to learn it so that way once you do learn it you know, you'll go, oh, yeah, I, I learned something nice today. You know, I learned something deep, some me. You know, I feel worthy to have that understanding. That's the trickery, okay? That's how the deception happens. That's why the scriptures say that in these last that um in these last days, some are gonna depart from the faith, giving heed, uh, uh giving heed to seducing spirits. Cause that's all it is, okay. If you don't have this understanding, you know, it's gonna provoke you to want to learn it. All right. Or they will say, uh, what they will say? Oh, the Most High ain't dealing with you on that level yet. Just stick to the milk. That's what they would do. <laughs> okay. So that way you like, oh dang, no, I gotta learn this now. I gotta get this understanding. I want to be deep, just like them. Pure deception. Okay. That's how it happens. But check this out. Let's get another scripture on that. Isaiah chapter sixty-six, verse twenty-two. For as the new heavens and the new earth which I will make shall remain before me, saith the Lord, so shall your seed and your name remain. And it shall come to pass that from one new moon to another and from one Sabbath to another shall all flesh come to worship before me, saith the Lord. What's that talking about? In the kingdom of heaven, okay? When the Most High going to make the new heaven and the new earth. At that time is when Christ is going to sit on this throne. Okay. So when he said that you're going to follow me in the regeneration. He's talking about in the final resurrection. Uh, those that live righteously are going to follow him into that next life. Into that next age. Okay. When all things are made new again. That's all it's saying. That's all regeneration is. To be renewed in your mind. To be restored. Okay, to be uh, uh, changed spiritually, that's it. So if we know that this is the true definition of regeneration, where did it get reincarnation from? Because reincarnation or transmigration of souls, okay, is an East Indian belief or a, a, a Asiatic belief about people dying and coming back either in another body or in an animal or in an animate object. That's, you know what I'm saying? That's that's what reincarnation is, okay? But that's nowhere in the Bible. You will never find a scripture that says that once you die, you will be reborn into another body in the third or fourth generation, and you will do the same thing you did in your last life. That's called a damnable heresy. That's a pure lie, okay? So the question is, 
Where do they get this reincarnation doctrine from? Okay, what gives them the understanding of reincarnation? Well, let's go through the scriptures and thoroughly dissect and dismember this doctrine and the scriptures they use to support reincarnation so we can get a better understanding of what the scriptures truly saying and what they use to support reincarnation, the true meaning of it, okay? Excuse me, y'all. Before we even do that, because I'm going too fast, before we even begin to break down this doctrine, let's first get the scriptures that go against reincarnation. Let's, let's, let's get that out the way first so we'll know for a fact that reincarnation is nowhere in the Bible. Let's do that first. Let's see how the scriptures cut up this doctrine. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. And as it is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. So I brought this out in my last video, if y'all watched it or not. But the scriptures say it's appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Now they will say they will take this same scripture and say, yeah, because once you die, you're gonna go up and be judged, and you're gonna come back on earth and live out that same <laughs> and live out that judgment <laughs> of your previous life. I'm sorry, man. It's it's horrendous. It's laughable when you really hear this and, and, and understand this reasoning. Okay, the scriptures don't say you're gonna come back down on the earth and live out your judgment. It don't say that at all. That's adding to the word. It's literally adding to the word of God to take this scripture and add more to it, okay? It doesn't say that. It says once you, once you die, then the judgment. That's it, okay? But they'll take all these random scriptures and mash them together as one thought to create this entire belief system of a reincarnation, this entire concept, okay? Complete falsehood. It's not biblical. So let's get some more scriptures on that. Wisdom of Solomon, chapter 16, verse 14. A man indeed killeth through his malice, and the spirit, when it is gone forth, returneth not. Neither the soul received up cometh again. The Bible is literally telling you, once you die and your spirit leaves your body, you're not coming back, okay? You're not coming back in the fourth or tenth or 12th generation you're not you're going to stay in the spirit world until the final resurrection okay once the spirit leave the leaves the body it don't come back okay it's not coming back on earth to receive a judgment and to and to live out that judgment on the earth okay that's complete lie let's get more acts chapter 2 verse 29 men and brethren let me freely speak unto you of the patriarch David, that he is both dead and buried, and his sepulture is with us unto this day. Now, according to those that believe in reincarnation, or as they say, regeneration, they will say that the people, the apostles, all understood the reincarnation. Well, if that's the case, then why are they saying that David is both dead and buried? Why didn't he say that he came back? He's back on the earth now. <laughs> Why didn't he say he's back on the earth? <laughs> okay. So even with that scripture alone, it's showing you that they didn't believe in no reincarnation. They didn't believe in this in this folly. All right. Let's get some more on that. Job chapter 14 verse 10. But man dieth and wasteth away. Yea. Man giveth up the ghost, and where is he? As the waters fail from the sea, and the flood decayeth and drieth up, so man lieth down and riseth not, till the heavens be no more. They shall not awake, nor be raised out of their sleep. O oh, that thou wouldest hide me in the grave, that thou wouldest keep me secret until thy wrath be past that thou wouldest appoint me a set time and remember me. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time will I wait till my change come. So Job, a perfect man, is saying that a man lies down or once you die, you don't rise again until the heavens be no more. Meaning until what? Until the resurrection. 
okay? So he he even understood. The prophets, the apostles, Christ, everybody in the Bible understood that there's no reincarnation. They taught no folly, okay? But so that's what happens when you take a bunch of random scriptures, okay, and lean to your own understanding and mash them together all out of context. You get crazy doctrines like this, okay? A man's not gonna come back on the earth until the resurrection. That's what the Bible is saying. That's what Job just said, okay? So where does this reincarnation come from? Where does this doctrine come from? That's what we're gonna break down next. We're gonna dismantle all the scriptures they use to support reincarnation and really break them down on what they really saying or on what they really mean, okay? So let's get started on that. Ecclesiastes chapter one, verse four. One generation passeth away and another generation cometh, but the earth abideth forever. Let's stop right there, okay? When you read Ecclesiastes, the first chapter, Solomon is going to things, going into cycles, okay? The cycle of life, the sun, the, the wind, the sea, and even man, okay? We read in verse four that Solomon said, one generation passeth, passeth away and another come, okay? So they would take this verse in verse four and say, yeah, you know, one generation die, go in the spirit world and wait while the next generation come. And once they die, that generation, the heavens come back down to earth while the other one's waiting. And it's doing that three and four generations where people dying, going, going up to heaven, coming on earth, people dying, going to heaven, coming on earth. That's not what the scripture is saying. That's East Indian Hinduism, uh, uh, Asiatic beliefs, okay? That's what they believe in. That's not in the Bible. All Solomon says that once one generation die, another one rise up. So you are one generation, and then you have kids, that's the next generation, and your kids' kids, that's the next generation, and it goes on like that, okay? We die off, the next one come. We die off, the next one come. We die off, the next one come. That's all it's saying. Nothing about reincarnation and the transmigration of souls. When you read the entire chapter, Solomon never mentioned things about spirits and souls going up and coming back down. People have to add their understanding to the scriptures. Okay? So let's continue. Verse 5. The sun also ariseth. And the sun goeth down, and hasteth to his place where he arose. The wind goeth toward the sun, and turneth about unto the north. It whirleth about continually, and the wind returneth again according to his circuits. All the rivers run into the sea, yet the sea is not full. Until the place from whence the rivers come, thither they return again. All things are full of labor, man cannot utter it. The eye is not satisfied with seeing, nor the ear filled with hearing. Verse 9. The thing that hath been, it is that which shall be. And that which is done, is that which shall be done. And there is no new thing under the sun. So, verse 9, okay. Here's where the confusion comes. Verse 9. It says, the thing that hath been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done, that which shall be done. So the things that happened back then is going to happen again. All is going into history repeating itself. That's all it's going to, okay? Nothing about reincarnation and souls coming back on the earth and dying and doing the same thing over and over again. It's talking about history repeating itself. How do we know? Well, let's go to another scripture that is, that supports this. Ecclesiastes chapter 3 verse 15. That which hath been is now, and that which is to be hath already been, and God requireth that which has passed. So the things that happened before is happening now, okay? That's why you get the term history repeats itself. As it happened back then, it's going to happen again in the future times, okay? That's why Solomon said that there is no new thing under the sun, okay? But let's further prove this, though. Isaiah chapter 42, verse 9. Behold, the former things are come to pass, 
and new things do I declare before they spring forth I tell you of them you see that so the most high says that the things that happened before are happening again the former things are come to pass so that's all the scripture saying what happens back then is going to happen again history repeating itself there's no new thing that's all it's saying okay nothing about reincarnation it don't even give the slightest hint to reincarnation okay but like i said before you have random scriptures mashed together as one thought to create this type of doctrine all right so let's go back to ecclesiastes and continue reading ecclesiastes chapter 1 verse 10 is there anything whereof it may be said see this is new it had been already of old time which was before us verse 11 there is no remembrance of former things neither shall there be any remembrance of things that are to come with those that shall come after you see that that's all solomon is saying that history goes in cycles that's why you have somebody out here that'll be like yeah you know i made this up you know i started a trend and you got somebody that was 40 uh, uh years older than the person be like no nah, young blood that was man that was back in our day they ain't nothing new we was been doing that because there's no new thing under the sun the thing that happened before is going to happen again okay it's the same thing with history and trends and and, and cycles of, of of events that happen in the world it's going to happen again that's all it's saying so why is he saying that there's going to be members of former things because we don't remember the things that happened 20 and 30 40 years ago we forget these things how do we know let's jump over to chapter 2 and verse 16 and it's going to tell you ecclesiastes chapter 2 verse 16 for there is no remembrance of the wise more than of the fool forever seeing that which now is in the days to come shall all be forgotten and how dieth the wise man as the fool you see that so solomon is saying that the things that happen in now is going to be forgotten in the future that's all he's saying which is now is going to be forgotten in the days to come so everything happening now is going to be forgotten 30 or 40 or 50 or 60 years later okay even when our um um once even once we dead and gone and our grandkids got kids 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 everything happening today is all gonna be forgotten that's all it's saying nothing about reincarnation and souls dying and coming back and living the same lot and living their judgment on earth and doing it again just die up and, and go back up to heaven and come back down and do it again to live that same judgment and to do the same thing over and over again to die again to go man it's it's nonsense it's complete madness okay it's it's insanity to even have that kind of mindset or to think that's really in the scriptures okay so let's let's further break this down let's get more scriptures they use to support reincarnation and let's give the true sense of what the scriptures really saying so what we're going to do now is look at a stumbling block scripture in second samuel about um the most High prophesied to david that a son going to come out of his loins and build him a house so the reason why this is a stumbling block because you have people that believe within this doctrine that christ was solomon in previous times so basically Christ was Solomon and sinned by having a thousand wives and he paid for that sin when he came as himself when he died on the cross. Okay, that's 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 the doctrine. Basically, Christ sinned and had to pay for it once he came on the earth as himself. Alright? That's that's blasphemy. Okay, that's complete blasphemy. So we're gonna go through this through this scripture in 2 Samuel, and we're gonna walk through it and give the true sense, okay? So let's get started. 2 Samuel chapter 7 verse 12. And when thy days be fulfilled and thou shalt sleep with thy fathers, I will set up thy seed after thee, which shall proceed out of thy bowels, and I will establish his kingdom. He shall build an house for my name, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. I will be his father, and he shall be my son. If he commit iniquity, I will chasten him with the rod of men and with the stripes of the children of men. Now, the stumbling block happens at verse 13 when it says that he shall build an house for my name 
and I will establish the throne of his kingdom forever. So they get getting tripped up on that verse because Solomon only reigned 40 years. His kingdom, Solomon's kingdom wasn't established forever. Okay? So they liken this to being about Christ. Even though Christ is going to be, he come through the seed of David and his kingdom will be forever. But this scripture is talking about Solomon. And this is why the scriptures say that precept must be upon precept, line upon line, here a little, there a little. So let's show you how this scripture is indeed talking about Solomon. First Chronicles chapter 28 verse 2. Then David the king stood up upon his feet and said, Hear me my brethren and my people. As for me, I had in mine heart to build an house of rest for the ark of the covenant of the Lord and for the footstool of our God and had made ready for the building. But God said unto me, Thou shalt not build an house for my name, because thou hast been a man of war, and hast shed blood. Howbeit, the Lord God of Israel chose me before all the house of my father to be king over Israel forever. For he had chosen Judah to be the ruler, and of the house of Judah, the house of my father, and among the sons of my father, he likened me to make me king over all Israel. And all, and of all my sons, for the Lord hath given me many sons. He had chosen Solomon, my son, to sit upon the throne of the kingdom of the Lord over Israel. And he said unto me, Solomon thy son, he shall build my house and my courts, for I have chosen him to be my son and I will be his father. Moreover, I will establish his kingdom forever. If he be constant to do my commandments and my judgments as at this day. So this scripture right here makes it very clear on who the Most High was speaking to in 2 Samuel. It's telling you the exact same thing. The Most High told you himself that he chose Solomon to be, um, to be set up in this deed after him. So 2 Samuel was talking about Solomon and he told him, I will establish his kingdom forever if he be constant to do my commandments. Now we know that Solomon sinned when he started, um, when he murdered the heathen woman and started following their gods. So the Most High took the kingdom from Solomon, not in his time, but in his son, he took it from Solomon and, and it split into two kingdoms. So that's talking about Solomon all day long. But let's further prove this though. Let's further break this down and clear up the confusion and the stumbling block. First Chronicles chapter 22 verse 6. Then he called for Solomon his son and charged him to build a house for the Lord God of Israel. And David said to Solomon, My son, as for me, it was in my mind to build a house unto the name of the Lord thy God. But the word of the Lord came to me saying, Thou hast shed blood abundantly, and hast made great wars. Thou shalt not build an house unto my name, because thou hast shed much blood upon the earth in my sight. Behold, a son shall be born to thee, who shall be a man of rest, and I will give him rest from all his enemies round about. For his name shall be Solomon, and I will give peace and quietness unto Israel in his days. He shall build an house for my name, and he shall be my son, and I will be his father, and I will establish the throne of his kingdom over Israel forever. Now my son, the Lord be with thee, and prosper thou, and build the house of the Lord thy God, as he hath said of thee. You see that? Clear as day. Clear as day talking about Solomon. 2 Samuel 7 is talking about how the Moses was going to set up Solomon to build a, a house for him. And he was going to establish his kingdom. Okay? That's all it's saying. It's, it's easy to be understood once you read the scriptures. That's why it's important. Once you come to this truth, once you come out of Christianity, it's important to really thoroughly read for yourself. Because even in the truth, you can still be lied to. And a lot of people are deceived with this doctrine of reincarnation. So much that they go to they go to say that Christ sinned as Solomon. That is blasphemy. 
okay? That is pure, pure blasphemy and a pure lie. Christ never came as Solomon and, and, and sinned and had to die for his sin and for the whole world based off his based off his sin. That is a man, that's crazy. Okay? That's crazy. According to this doctrine, if Sol if Christ was Solomon and he came as himself, he was supposed to take a thousand wives and he didn't woman and do the same thing he did in his previous life. Because according to the doctrine, you did the same thing you did over and over and over again. So why didn't Christ take a thousand women and sin and, and start worshiping their gods and setting up altars to, to uh for, for the heathen women to sacrifice wine on? Why didn't Christ do that? Because reincarnation is a lie. That doctrine is a pure lie and it's folly. Okay? So let's get the scripture that they say that uh, Christ sinned in his past life and he gotta he gotta uh pay for that sin and as himself. Let's get that scripture they used to support this. Hebrews chapter 7, verse 27. Who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice first for his own sins and then for the people's, for this he did once when he offered up himself. So they'll use that scripture and be like, see. You know, Christ had to offer up sins for himself and for the people when he died on the cross. No, that's not biblical at all. Okay, let's get the true understanding of Hebrews 7 and 27. And we're going to see if Christ had to die for his own sins and for the people's. Let's break this down thoroughly. So we're going to jump up to verse 23 to get the context of what they're talking about. Really, we can start from verse 1. Because that's a comparison between the high priest and Yahweh Shah being that high priest. Okay, but to get straight to the point, we're going to jump up to verse 23. Okay, Hebrews chapter 7 verse 23. And they truly were many priests because they were not suffered to continue by reason of death. But this man, because he continued with ever, hath an unchangeable priesthood. Wherefore, he is able also to save them to the uttermost that come unto God by him, seeing he ever liveth to make intercession for them. For such an high priest became us, who is holy, harmless, undefiled, separate from sinners, and made higher than the heavens, who needeth not daily as those high priests to offer up sacrifice for first his own sins and then for the people's for this he did once when he offered up himself so when you understand the service in the house of the high priest once they went in to do the service they had to offer up sin for themselves first then for the people that's all that's talking about the high priest had to offer up sins for their own selves and then for the people Okay, so let's further uh, break that down. Let's let's prove that first. Leviticus chapter 9 verse 7. And Moses said unto Aaron, Go unto the altar and offer thy sin offering and thy burnt offering and make an atonement for thyself and for the people and offer the offering of the people and make an atonement for them as the Lord commanded. Verse 8. Aaron therefore went unto the altar and slew the calf of the sin offering, which was for himself. So we read in, in the law, in the Torah, that Aaron, the high priest, had to offer up a sacrifice for himself first, then for the people. Okay, so that's what the scripture is saying in Hebrews 7, that the high priest offered up sins for themselves, then for the people. Because in that next clause, it's comparing it to Yahweh shot. But this man did it once when he offered it himself. Okay? That's what that's talking about. It's not talking about Christ sinning in his past life as Solomon. So he had to come back as himself to offer himself for the sins of himself and for the people. That's that's <laughs> that is not true at all. That is a complete lie. That's what happens when you understand, uh uh when you lean to your own understanding and you just mash a whole bunch of random scriptures and not really reading what the scriptures are saying. Okay? 
And that's deceiving a lot of people. And a lot of people really believe that uh, Christ sinned at Solomon. Damnable heresies. Okay? So let's go back. Second Chronicles chapter 6, verse 6. But I have chosen Jerusalem that my name might be there and have chosen David to be over my people Israel. Now it was in the heart of David, my father, to build a house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. But the Lord said to David, my father, for as much as it, as it was in thine heart to build a house for my name, thou didst well, and that it was in thine heart. Notwithstanding, thou shalt not build the house, but thy son, which shall come forth out of thy loins, he shall build the house for my name. The Lord therefore hath performed his word that he hath spoken, for I am risen up in the room of David my father, and am set on the throne of Israel, as the Lord promised, and have built the house for the name of the Lord God of Israel. So that's the nail to the coffin right there. Second Samuel 7 is talking about Solomon, it's not talking about Yahweh Okay, so Yahweh didn't come back on the earth as himself when he was Solomon before and had to pay for his sin as Solomon when he taken a, a strange woman and had to die on the cross for himself and for the people. That's the stumbling block because people are not reading the Bible. You got to go precept upon precept, here a little, there a little. Okay, it doesn't mean take a whole bunch of random scriptures and, and, and create a doctrine behind it and mash them together and, and, and formulate some type of uh, concept of these random scriptures. Okay? Here a little, there a little. The Bible explains itself. That's what it's saying. So to get understanding, you got to go to somewhere else where it's saying the exact same thing in a better way. That's all it's saying. Okay? So on top of that, you have the uh, uh, another stumbling block. You have... Um, Elijah and, and John the Baptist okay that's a stumbling block too where they will say you know well Elijah came back as John the Baptist because Christ said that he was uh, Elijah so we got to break that down and give the understanding of that as well okay so let's get started Malachi chapter 4 verse 5 behold I will send you Elijah the prophet before the coming of the great and dreadful day of the Lord and he shall turn the heart of the fathers to the children, and the heart of the children to their fathers, lest I come and smite the earth with the curse. So the Mosai told Malachi that he was going to send Elijah before the great and dreadful day, right? So let's get the stumbling block scripture that has a lot of people thinking that the scripture supports reincarnation in the book of Matthew. Matthew 11, verse 11. Verily I say unto you, among them that are born of women, there hath not risen a greater than John the Baptist, notwithstanding he that is least in the kingdom of heaven is greater than he. And from the days of John the Baptist until now, the kingdom of heaven suffereth violence, and the violent take it by force. For all the prophets and the law prophesied until John. And if ye will receive it, this is Elias, which was for to come. He that hath ears to hear, let him hear. So that's one stumbling block there. Let's get the other one. Matthew chapter 17, verse 9. And as they came down from the mountain, Jesus charged them, saying, Tell the vision to no man until the Son of Man be risen again from the dead. And his disciples asked him, saying, why then say the scribes that Elias must come first? And Jesus answered and said unto them, Elias truly shall first come and restore all things. But I say unto you that Elias is come already, and they knew him not, but have done unto him whatsoever they listed. Likewise shall also the Son of Man suffer of them. Then the disciples understood that he spake unto them of John the Baptist. So these are two stumbling blocks, right? So if reincarnation, then why is Christ saying that Elijah already came? Why is he saying that this John the Baptist if there's no reincarnation, right? That's the question. Well, that's why Christ said in Matthew 11, if you can receive it, this is John the Baptist. If you have ears to hear, then hear. Because was Christ speaking literal? 
No. We're going to find out what Christ was talking about when he said that John the Baptist is Elijah. Luke chapter 1 verse 11. And there appeared unto him an angel of the Lord standing on the right side of the altar of incense. And when Zechariah saw him, he was troubled, and fear fell upon him. But the angel said unto him, Fear not, Zechariah, for thy prayer is heard. And thy wife Elizabeth shall bear thee a son, and thou shalt call his name John. And thou shalt have joy and gladness, and many shall rejoice at his birth. For he shall be great in the sight of the Lord, and shall drink neither wine nor strong drink. And he shall be filled with the Holy Ghost, even from his mother's womb. And many of the children of Israel shall he turn to the Lord their God. And he shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elias, to turn the hearts of the fathers to the children, and the disobedient to the wisdom of the just, to make ready a people prepared for the Lord. So this is why Christ said that John the Baptist is Elijah, because he was going to go in the spirit and power of Elijah before the coming of the Lord. And that's what happened. Okay, that's why he said, if you can receive it, this is Elijah. If any man have an ear, let him hear. Because he wasn't speaking literal saying that Elijah is John the Baptist reincarnated. No, John the Baptist is in the, uh, is in the spirit and power of Elijah. That's why when we read in Matthew 16 or 17, he understood that Christ was talking about John the Baptist when he said that this is John, um, this is Elijah. Meaning he came in the spirit and the power of Elijah. That's all it's saying. Nothing about reincarnation. That's it. It's, it's simple. And on top of that, they will say that John the Baptist doesn't remember being Elijah in his past life. Because in Ecclesiastes 1 and 11, it says that there's no remembrance of former things. But we just went through that understanding of what that scripture means. So they'll use this scripture here, okay, to say that uh, John the Baptist doesn't remember being Elijah. John chapter 1 verse 19. And this is the record of John, when the Jews sent priests and Levites from Jerusalem to ask him, Who art thou? And he confessed, and denied not, but confessed, I am not the Christ. And they asked him, What then? Art thou Elias? And he said, I am not. Art thou their prophet? And he answered, No. You see that? So they'll use that same thing and say, Well, the prophets and all the apostles and disciples, they understood reincarnation because they asking John, Are you that prophet? Are you Elijah? Okay. But let's backtrack. Let's break this down to see what the scriptures are really saying. Let's get the true understanding of what's happening here. Let's continue reading on. Verse 22. Then said they unto him, Who art thou, that we may give an answer to them that sent us? What sayest thou of thyself? He said, I am the voice of one crying in the wilderness. Make straight the way of the Lord, as said the prophet Isaiah. So wait a minute. John the Baptist told them, I'm not Elias, but I'm him that's crying in the wilderness in Isaiah 43. Why is John the Baptist saying that? Because he understood that he's not the physical reincarnation of Elijah. He understood that he came in the spirit and power of Elijah. So why are the people asking him if he's Elijah or not? If he's that great, prof uh, that great prophet? Because they wondered the same thing about Christ. Why is that? Let's get that scripture real quick. Matthew chapter 16, verse 13. When Jesus came into the coast of Caesarea Philippi, he asked his disciples, saying, Whom do men say that I, the Son of Man, am? And they said, Some say that thou art John the Baptist, some Elias, and others Jeremiah, or one of the prophets. And he said unto them, But whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. You see that? That's deep right there. That's heavy. They asking Christ if he's Jeremiah or Elijah because they understood in reincarnation. They understand that you come back every third or fourth generation. Damn, that's deep. That's heavy, Ock. No. Back it up. That track. Let's stop. No. 
Let's go precept upon precept and let's find out why they're asking or why they're wondering if Christ are these different prophets. Luke chapter 9 verse 6 And they departed and went through the towns preaching the gospel and healing everywhere. Now Herod the Tetrarch heard of all that was done by him and he was perplexed because that it was said of some that John was risen from the dead and of some that Elias had appeared and of others that one of the old prophets was risen again. That's why they was wondering who Christ was because they all thought that he was a prophet that rose from the dead. So they believed and understood what? Resurrection, not reincarnation. That's why they ask him, is he Jeremiah? Is he Elias? Is he that old prophet? Because they thought that the prophets rose from the dead. That's all they're saying. Let's get another one on that. Matthew chapter 14 and verse 1. At that time, Herod the Tetrarch heard of the fame of Jesus and said unto his servants, This is John the Baptist. He is risen from the dead. And therefore, mighty works do show forth themselves in him. So guess what? The scripture shows that everybody in the ancient world all believed and understood in resurrection. They never believed in this nonsense reincarnation. And the scriptures just told you that they thought that he was a prophet that rose from the dead, not reborn every other generation. Okay? So that blows that doctrine clean out the water. If it didn't make sense now, then it, it should be clear now. Reincarnation is not biblical. We have to throw that out. Get rid of that damnable heresy because it's folly. It's a lie. They all believed in resurrection. That's the big, that's the big thing right there. Resurrection, not reincarnation. Okay? So let's break down resurrection. We're going to further prove and show how all the prophets and all the um the apostles and everyone believed in resurrection through many examples and through different scriptures. Matthew chapter 27 verse 50. Jesus when he had cried again with a loud voice yielded up the ghost and behold the veil of the temple was rent in twain from the top to the bottom and the earth did quake and the rocks rent and the graves were open, and many bodies of the saints which slept arose and came out of the graves after his resurrection and went into the holy city and appeared unto many. Now when the centurion and they that were with him watching Jesus saw the earthquake and those things that were done, they feared greatly, saying, Truly, this was the Son of God. This is why it's extremely important to read your Bibles when you come into the truth to avoid crazy doctrines like this. Because we're reading that once Christ died and yielded up the ghost that the graves were open, okay? And the people that slept in and the people that were dead, they rose out of their graves. So they wasn't waiting up in the heavens, waiting to come back the third and fourth generation. No, they was already dead and gone. And when Christ died, their graves opened up and they resurrected in their same bodies and came back to life. That's what the scriptures is, is teaching. That's what Yahweh taught. He always taught resurrection. Okay? So you have to imagine that and understand. When Christ died and you seeing the graves and the tombs open, you seeing all these people come back to life. So you got to imagine seeing your great, great, uh, grandfather dead and come back come back to life you have to imagine that that's not reincarnation and Christ himself said that I am the resurrection not I am the reincarnation in the full generation no so we seen that it's all about resurrection so let's get another example within Lazarus because Lazarus died and we're going to see what happened in that story John chapter 6 verse 54 Whoso eateth my flesh and drinketh my blood hath eternal life and I will raise him up at the last day. So Christ wasn't literally speaking about eating his flesh and drinking his blood. He's talking about receiving Christ 
to partake of him. So meaning believing in Christ. So who, whosoever believe in the son of God, he's going to raise them up at the last day. Okay. They're not coming back in the fourth generation. They're not coming back in the seventh generation. They're not coming back in the 10th generation. Okay. Everyone that's dead right now are in their graves. Okay. Their soul is resting in the spirit world and they're going to come back in the resurrection when um, Christ make his second coming. Okay. That's what the Bible is teaching, not reincarnation. So we had to throw this, this doctrine out and believe on what the Son of Man taught, on what uh, Yahweh Shah taught as resurrection. So for those who still don't quite understand what resurrection is, resurrection is the soul coming back in the same body at the last day. Okay, so once the body decomposes and break down, okay, your body remains in the earth. All right, it remains within the earth and once that second coming at the last day that all the components and everything are going to be restored and the most high going to put your soul in that same body that you died in and you're going to be in you're going to live again eternally forever okay your body going to be incorruptible that's what resurrection is coming back to life in the new spiritual body okay in the same body but angelic and, and incorruptible Okay, so let's let's further break this down more. Let's get more scripture on resurrection, and we're gonna we're gonna further prove how the Bible does in no shape or fashion support reincarnation. So what we're gonna read now is how um, a man named Lazarus died, and Yahweh Shah came to do a miracle on Yahweh Shah. I mean, um, to, came to do a miracle on Lazarus to bring him back from the dead. Okay, so we're gonna read this story, and we're gonna see what happened in this instance. John chapter 11 verse 1 Now a certain man was sick named Lazarus of Bethany the town of Mary and her sister Martha It was that Mary which anointed the Lord with ointment and wiped his feet with her hair whose brother Lazarus was sick Therefore his sister sent unto him saying Lord behold he whom thou lovest is sick When Jesus heard that he said this sickness is not unto death, but for the glory of God, that the Son of God might be glorified thereby. Verse 11. These things say he, and after that he saith unto them, Our friend Lazarus sleepeth, but I go, that I may awake him out of sleep. Then say his disciples, Lord, if he sleep, he shall do well. How be it? Jesus spake of his death, but they thought that he had spoken of taking a rest and sleep. Then said Jesus unto them plainly, Lazarus is dead, and I am glad for your sakes that I was not there to the intent ye may believe. Nevertheless, let us go unto him. So we read in the context of what's happening. Okay, Lazarus is dead. And as we continue to read that he's been dead for four days. And they said that, you know, Lazarus is sick, but Christ told them that he's not sick until his death. But Christ is going to come and perform a miracle that they may believe. Now, we're going to jump down a little bit further, and we're going to see what Martha said unto Yahweh Shah, or unto Christ. Verse 21, Then said Martha unto Jesus, Lord, if thou hast been here, my brother had not died. But I know that even now whatsoever thou wilt ask of God, God will give it thee. Jesus said unto her, Thy brother shall rise again. Martha said unto him, I know that he shall rise again in the resurrection at the last day. You see that? Martha told you how it shall. I know my brother is going to rise again in the resurrection at the last day. So if they understood reincarnation, why didn't she say that I know my brother going to come back in the third and in the fourth generation and be born again. Why did she say that if they somehow understood reincarnation or if they believed in reincarnation? Because they didn't. They believed in resurrection. And Yahweh Shah goes on to tell her that I am the resurrection. So he asked her, do you believe this? She said, yeah. And, she brought, and he brought him back to life. So the whole point of, of that story was to show that 
there's going to be a resurrection at the last day. In the same way that Christ brought um, Lazarus back from the dead, the same way that Christ is going to come back and open the graves of all the saints, and they too are going to come back to life in the same body. So it was never a reincarnation thing. That scripture shows you that they believed in resurrection. They didn't believe in every fourth, third generation and fifth generation, and you're going to live out that judgment on the earth. They didn't believe in no nonsense like that. Scripture's telling you. It's all about resurrection. Yeah, how shot is the resurrection, not the reincarnation. So if we believe in them in a reincarnation, we're not believing in what Christ taught. We not believe in what our forefathers believed. We not believe in the res of Christ. We believe in, in a lie. Okay? And we gotta repent from that and come back to the truth according to the Bible. Resurrection over reincarnation. Okay? Let's get more on this though. Isaiah chapter 26 verse 18 we have been with child we have been in pain we have as it were brought forth when we have not wrought any deliverance in the earth neither have the inhabitants of the world fallen thy dead men shall live together with my dead body shall they arise awake and sing ye that dwell in dust for thy dew is as the dew of herbs, and the earth shall cast out the dead. Wait a minute, time out. You have the prophet Isaiah saying that they, they, the, the dead men shall live together with my dead body, they shall arise. Now, hold up, why is Isaiah talking about with my dead body shall they arise? Because what Isaiah understood in resurrection, those that sleep in the dust are gonna come back out of the earth. Okay, so everyone that's dead now, their body is in the earth, is decomposed. And in that final day, when um, Christ makes his second coming, it's going to be a great resurrection. And all of those that's dead now are going to come out. Um, their dead body is going to come back together and their soul going to re-enter their body and they're going to come back to life. Okay, in incorruptible bodies. That's the whole moral of it. Resurrection, okay? That's what Isaiah was, is, is saying here. Daniel chapter 12 verse 9 and he said go thy way Daniel for the words are closed up and sealed till the time of the end many shall be purified and made white and tried but the wicked shall do wickedly and none of the wicked shall understand but the wise shall understand and from the time that the daily sacrifice shall be taken away in the abomination that make a desolate set up there shall be a thousand two hundred and ninety days blessed is he that waiteth and cometh to the thousand three hundred and five and thirty days but go thou thy way till the end be for thou shalt rest and stand and thy lot at the end of the days so the most I was telling Daniel you're gonna go your way and rest until the day of the end when he's going to stand in his lot. Why? Because Daniel was a righteous man. What is his lot? To be in the kingdom of heaven. He's going to stand in his lot in the resurrection. Okay? That's what the Bible is saying. But you have some people that will take that scripture and say, yeah, see, Daniel going to come back in the last days in the fourth generation. They even go to say that all the prophets are back on the earth now. Abraham's on the earth. Jacob is on the earth. Paul's on the earth, Peter's on the earth, Jeremiah's on the earth, all these people on the earth now, that's, that's, that's what they saying, that all these different people are on the earth now. Now, how in the hell is that possible if according to reincarnation, that people and spirits gonna come back in every third and fourth generation? So randomly in this time, they all on, on the earth at the same time, when they was clearly in different generations, how is that possible? How is that possible for, for me and Paul and Abraham and Noah all be on the earth now? How in the hell is that even physically possible? So even with the reincarnation doctrine itself, there's contradiction. There's flaws in the doctrine within itself. That's not even possible for all of us to be on the earth at the same time. Peter's on the earth, Matthew, Mark's on the earth, uh, uh, John's on the earth now, the 12 apostles, 
Well, if uh, Judas on the earth now, the um the traitor. So if all these people on the earth now, and people are gonna do the same thing they did back then, that means Christ gotta be on the earth now. Judas gotta betray Christ, and Christ gotta get hanged again. How in the hell is that possible with this doctrine? How? That means somebody in this last days got to get crucified. Because everybody going to come back their third or fourth generation and live out their same lot. They got to they, they do it all over again. We all got to go on, on slave ships again. Okay? We all got to get lynched again. We, we got to do the same thing over and over and over again. That's pure garbage. Okay? That is pure, outrageous, horrendous, trash garbage. This, re this reincarnation is a pure lie. We got to come out of this false doctrine and come back to the truth. That's why it's important to read your Bible. Stop being lied to by men. Read the Bible and get understanding from the most high. Because this doctrine got a lot of people deceived. And it's sad. It really is. But nevertheless, let's get more scriptures. Job chapter 19 and verse 25. For I know that my Redeemer liveth, and that he shall stand at the latter day upon the earth. And though after my skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God, whom I shall see for myself, and mine eyes shall behold, and not another, though my reins be consumed within me. So Job understood that there was a savior, Yahweh Shah, that was going to come after his time. That he was going to come at the latter days. Because he said that I know my Redeemer liveth. And he shall stand in the latter, um, the latter day. And he said that, excuse me. And though after my skin, uh, skin worms destroy this body, yet in my flesh shall I see God. Now why is he saying that? Because he understood that once he died, his body going to be decomposed and the worms are going to you know eat the flesh and it's going to nourish the ground but in the same body he's going to be resurrected when all the components and sinews and bones and flesh and muscle come back together and he his spirit come back in that body that's when he's going to see christ in the resurrection so he know he's going he he even believed in yahweh shot before he was on the earth he knew that there was going to be a final resurrection that's why Christ said, every eye shall see him that pierced him. Because they're in the resurrection, every single soul, either wicked or righteous, are going to be resurrected and they're going to see Yahweh shot. So every eye is going to see Christ. We all going to live again at that latter day. In the last day, I should say. Because the last day is in the day of the resurrection. Okay? So we all going to see Christ. Even them that pierced him. So it's all about resurrection. So they'll use that same scripture to make, to formulate the reincarnation doctrine. They will say, oh, well, Job said he's going to see Yahweh Shah. How is he going to see Yahweh Shah? Because Job going to come back on the earth again. He's going to come back and be reborn through reincarnation in his fourth generation. So he's going to see Christ, but he ain't going to know he's Job because he's going to be back on the earth and he's going to forget who he was before. That's, that's the doctrine that's being taught. That's the doctrine that's being taught, okay? So all these scriptures they use talking about resurrection, they say it, um, it's talking about reincarnation. Here's another one. 2nd Ezra chapter 14 verse 35. For after death shall the judgment come, when we shall live again, and then shall the names of the righteous be manifest, and the works of the ungodly shall be declared. You see that? Because once you die, you're going to get judged. Then you're going to come back on earth and live out that judgment. And you're going to you're gonna continue that same cycle over and over and over again. You die and live again because you're going to be reborn back on the earth. No. No, that's not what the scripture is saying. Again, every scripture they use to support reincarnation is talking about resurrection. Okay? It's talking about resurrection. The same thing when Nicodemus asked, shall a man be into again this mother's womb? How's that possible? So they, they never believed in this nonsense of, of reincarnation. Okay? Let's get a few more, then we're going to close out. Second Edges, chapter 2, verse 14. Take heaven and earth to witness 
for I have broken the evil in pieces and created the good, for I live, saith the Lord. Mother, embrace thy children and bring them up with gladness. Make their feet as fast as a pillar, for I have chosen thee, saith the Lord. And those that be dead will I raise up again from their places and bring them out of their graves, for I have known my name in Israel. So we could go on and on and on all throughout the entire Bible, just getting more scripture after scripture showing how the Bible teaches resurrection and not reincarnation. Okay, the scriptures they use for uh, reincarnation actually supports resurrection, or as they say, regeneration. So this lesson was for those that's new in this truth, or for those that's seeking true understanding of the Bible, to learn the truth of the scriptures as it is written and not a whole bunch of verses taken out of context and put together to formulate some kind of doctrine. This doctrine got a lot of people deceived within the Israelite community now. So for those that's new, you're gonna hear people talking about reincarnation, you'll hear it. And once you do, just be warned of that. Don't be deceived by that, okay? Don't be fooled by how good it sounds and, and, and verses taken out of context and people adding to the word. The scriptures say that if anybody adds to the word, the most high gonna to add to their place. I'm paraphrasing. So we gotta be mindful of this. Let's come back to this truth of the Bible. Let's come back to what Christ taught, okay? Didn't teach reincarnation. You come back every third or fourth generation. That's why our scriptures say that in these last days, a lot of people are gonna depart from the faith and take heed to seducing spirits. That doctrine has a seducing spirit on it. It sounds real good. It sounds strange in an interesting way. It make you want to learn it. Next thing you know, you believe a lot. Got to be careful of that. That's why you must study and really read the Bible for yourself when you come to this truth. Stop having everybody try to teach you their understanding and just read the Bible. It's going to explain itself. Okay, so I hope... This understanding, I hope this lesson was un, um, edifying and you, got, you all got the true understanding, okay? And that you all was edified through the spirit of resurrection, regeneration, and reincarnation, the reincarnation lie. Okay, so I'm Brother Adriel, and with that, I'll say Shalom.